Thank you. So first, I would like to um, make a short experiment uh, with Alexa. Who has Alexa or another smart speaker at home? So a few of you. So computers that can talk. And um, I will show you where the limits of these systems. Alexa, what are the lottery numbers of next week? My crystal ball is too cloudy to see the numbers. Okay, so uh, these um, pretended intelligent systems uh, can talk about the future. But what I will tell you is something that those chatbots will talk about the future and you and your personal life in the not that so far future. And I'll begin with a personal experience. So one morning, five years ago, six years ago, I went to work by this kickboard. This is called kickboard. And uh, it was um, a strategy. So it was an uh, icy winter morning, slip surface on the road. And uh, I hit the ground. I pushed with the hands back. And I broke my shoulder. So I had strong shoulder pain. So same day, they did an x-ray. So you see the dislocated um, arm here. Um, so actually, it, it, it looks like it's fixed, but um, after a surgery, which uh, went two or three hours in the same afternoon, it looked like this. So uh, one rod in the mid cemented in the humerus bone, five screws driven through the bone. And so actually, so this was the emergency surgery, so nobody expected it was that worse. And uh, immediately I started rehabilitation by conservative measures. It, it um, cost me two years to decide on a very severe question whether I remain with a very hard pain, the hardest pain in my whole life, or I would get relief by doing a sh total shoulder restriction. And uh, I waged the chances against the wrist at that time. And when I did the surgery, I be, uh, it was uh, implemented such a prosthetic. This is my right arm at the moment when you look inside by X-ray. When I woke up at that February 13th, 2014, in the morning after the surgery, I was wondering, I couldn't move my arm. And it came out after several investigations, actually over a week, uh, that my arm was totally paralyzed after I got the prosthetic. So I had a stiff arm. I couldn't move nothing to my fingertips. And I had the decision to be made before whether I would take that risk. It was a life-changing decision at that time. So, and I experienced what it means to have only one arm left. So, and the question was at that time, had the surgery really been a wise decision? Because I had pain without the prosthetics, no pain, but actually no arm at all afterwards. And this goes to a lifetime perspective on doing decisions. So, I will tell you how chatbots will be able, by plausible reasoning and by assistance in decision making, how you can make better decisions in your life, if you have real life-changing decisions. And there are much of them. So, uh, two questions for you. No, first, a uh, survey, just to, have an, to imagine what is, the, let's say, the volume decision you do of a lifetime. At the end of this day, you will have done 27 decisions. Over the course of a whole life, you will have done about 773,000. Unfortunately, you will regret almost 
Yeah? And the question is, how could chatbots help us to reduce the number of decisions you would have regret otherwise? So, what is the nature of decision making? So, one question for you. Are you a tea drinker or coffee drinker? Tea drinkers, hands up. Coffee drinker? Yeah? So, if you look at the survey, it's about uh, coffee, 85%, tea, 15%. So, it's a quite different audience here. <laughs> anyway, so it's about, this is a very easy decision to do. And if you go to the next break, or in the morning, you can reverse your decision. Next question on decision making. Do you want to raise kids, children in your life? Who wants to raise children? Who is sure that he will not, anyway? A survey again. <laughs> One or more. About half of the people, uh, none, so no children at all, or um, not, not yet sure, maybe, yeah, maybe unexpected, you can't be sure. <laughs> we count on conscious decisions now, yeah? Not un unconscious. Anyway, so what is the difference between the, uh, those decisions? The first one, the long uh, the first one on, on uh, coffee or tea is reversible. And the other, so you can change it tomorrow. You will not regret because you change. The decision on raising children, usually you, you can't change. It's a life-changing decision. And you will have many decisions in your life, whether you do vocational training, whether to go to another country, whether to uh, marriage a princess. <laughs> yeah, All these de decisions you make will have great impact, whatever will happen in the future. And so it might be helpful to have someone in place who could give you more advice on what might be the better decision. So, and the claim is, if we look at chatbots today, as you have seen, it's not that good in answering the future. By two very specific methodologies already in place, we can implement chatbots, and they will help us to reduce those decisions we otherwise regret. Let's look at the first uh, concept we have to implement in chatbots. It's clairvoyance. Chatbots have to understand something about the future. And this is done by looking in alternatives of futures, identified plausible but very unlikely outcomes. And I will explain this by a so-called golden board. Yeah? So these um, beads are running down pegs in a specific way, and they form a bell-shaped curve. And you will not be able to predict the outcome of one specific bead, but you can predict the shape of the bell curve. And looking into the future is something like this. The present starts at the, at, the, at the top, and let's say you look 20 years in the future, you will have many possible outcomes. And there are outcomes which are more likely in the middle, and otherwise, at the long tails, are those which are unlikely, but totally plausible. And looking into the future without predicting it is to understand what are those very unlikely but highly possible alternatives of the future. So it's not about predicting the future, but to understand how it relates to each other. So you get a shape of the future by looking into extremes, and you can prepare because you widen your view on what might happen. And this can be done by future systems of artificial intelligence. So for me, unfortunately, the arm power this was a plausible but very unlikely outcome of the surgery. So it's not about it will be sure, a sure outcome. It's about to look with more understanding on 
why you decide something and why not. The second thing a future chatbot can do is help us to do the decision. It's not to show, okay, okay there are extreme features we can talk about. It's about to find a way how to do the decision at all. And taking decision, it's a it's quite complicated process from a psychological point of view. So, have we anything in place where this is done already? Looking again at my shoulder joint restoration, how did I make the decision? So I looked at all papers which talked about the risks of such a surgery, and in the end, after two years, looking at papers and probabilities and risks, I decided to do it. And what is in place already is something I did with the physicians and the surgeons at that time. I talked about, should I do it or should I do it not? For two years. And I changed mind in between. And the process behind it is called shared decision making. And it's a methodology that is already in place in hospital settings for decades, for 30, 40 years. And it's actually, it's very simple. You have initial preferences. Let's say you would like to be healthy in the future, yeah, for sure. But actually, you need informed preferences. You need an understanding about what will happen and why. And in between, it's a deliberation about what are the consequences. And this, oh, this process at all is done in a couple of talks you do. A choice talk, an option talk, a decision talk, and you do the decision. This is a very simple model, and this could be implemented, not from a technical point of view, but from a dialogical point of view into the future chatbots. And I claim this will happen in your lifetime. And those chatbots will be systems which will help you to make better decisions in your life. So, the future chatbot is, I claim, a system which is a clairvoyant in the first place. It looks into the future in a systematic way to widen your perspective on what might happen. And it helps you in doing actually the decision. So it's not about to have the features in place, it's to decide what to do with those possibilities. But this will not be an answer to what, you, what is really necessary. These systems can give you plausible answers. But what's for you left is something you need plausible questions. And these plausible questions are beyond just to have reasoning for something, <coughs> but to think about your values, about your belief systems, whether you are religious, what will be left for you in life. Thank you.